Welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Tim Kidwell. Let's talk about cleaning and maintaining your paintbrushes. First, let's consider what the bristles of paintbrushes are made from. You've got two basic choices, either natural or synthetic. Natural paintbrushes can be made from hog's hair, camel's hair, Kolinsky's sable, and they all have a pretty specific use, whether it be watercolors, inks, oil painting and the like. For modelers, our better option is to go with synthetic brushes. They're going to hold up better to the different kinds of chemicals that we're using during modeling, and they're going to last longer. You may ask yourself, why bother taking care of the brushes, maintaining the brushes that you have? Aren't they sort of semi-disposable? The answer is not really. If you purchase quality brushes, you're going to want to take care of them. And a brush could last you a really long time. Um, this brush here, for example, is older than I am. It was my dad's. I still use it and I still take care of it and maintain it. What you're going to need for cleaning your brushes is a receptacle to hold some warm water, paper towels, a cleaning solution of some sort, liquid soap works, or a cleaner conditioner specifically for brushes. You can get it in liquid or in a semi-cake form. And then of course, a dirty brush. Now you've finished your painting session and you're getting ready to clean your brushes. The first thing that you're going to want to do is get as much of the paint out as possible using whatever thinner that you were using while painting. So for acrylics, it's gonna be water. For enamels, it's gonna be enamel thinner, oils, mineral spirits, right? So you wanna go back to your receptacle and make sure that you're getting out as much of the paint as possible just by dipping it and then pushing the brush up against the side of your, your palette, your paint jar, or whatever you may have. Now once it's mostly running free and you're not seeing a lot of color coming back out of the brush, then what you wanna do is move on to the detergent phase. The easiest one that we all have really is probably liquid soap, either in the form of dish soap or hand soap. Those can work. You can also use a brush soap and conditioner like this one here, or a solid soap, which we'll show you in a second. If you're using a liquid soap, you're going to want to go ahead and probably put that soap into a palette, okay? And then you can go ahead, and I'll just show you, take a little bit into the brush, and what you want to do is just start to work it in and try to work up a lather with that. And you can see that that's starting to lather now, right? And what you want to do is just work that lather until you can see that there's no more of the pigment that's coming out of the brush. Then you can go ahead, rinse the brush, and then pull it along a paper towel or a microfiber towel, whatever you may have, and dry that out. And then at the end, what you're going to want to do is just shape the brush so that it goes back to its original shape. The same process or a similar process is used with a solid soap. You will go ahead and again, get your brush wet and then move it into the soap. And what you're going to try to do is just work up a good lather. just like that, make sure that it is thorough through all the bristles. Then you can move to your hand, and again, just work that lather until you're certain that there's no more pigment left in the brush. Rinse it thoroughly, dry it out, and then when you're done, go ahead and just reshape your brush so that it maintains its normal natural shape. 
Sometimes you have brushes that just don't have the shape that they were initially supposed to have. Through use, they've got hooked ends or some of the bristles have just, they, they don't form up anymore. You don't have to throw those brushes away and you don't have to go at those bristles with scissors. You can try to form the original shape back for the brush. So what if you have a brush whose bristles are in really bad shape? For instance, this guy here, he's a round triple aught and he's not doing so well. This is Aaron Skinner's brush, by the way. He's really trying to test my skills. Uh, this is a number four round, and you can see here it has some, some flyaways where the bristles just have, uh, you know, they're just not maintaining shape. Instead of trimming those off with a scissors, what you can do is use a hair putty. Now you don't want anything that's you know clear and greasy. What you're actually looking for is something that's relatively thick that looks like putty. Uh, it might come in a number of different names. This Old Spice putty with beeswax, beeswax works. It's water soluble, so that is something to keep in mind. What you wanna do is just like if you're gonna do it with your hair, just get a little bit on your finger and then work it into the brush. Okay, work it into the brush. And what that's gonna allow you to do is try and work that brush back into its original shape. Now, like I said, this one was in rough shape to begin with, and sometimes brushes cannot be salvaged, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But in this case, you know what, it's not, too bad, but he is still, he's still not doing as well as he could be. We could probably apply a little bit more, maybe fix that. However, with this guy, Again, that one's an easy fix, right? You can see it. Those flyaways have already gone up. I can go ahead and shape the brush back into its original shape. And then what I wanna do is just set that brush aside to dry, let the, let the putty do its work and help train those bristles to go back to their natural to their natural shape. So after you've done that, you've used the putty, you've reshaped the brush, and you've let it set for a couple of days, and you wanna go and use it. What you wanna make sure you do is you thoroughly rinse and clean the brush, just like what we've been discussing earlier. Go back, put it in the water, get your brush detergent, and go ahead and just rinse it out, wash it, and then rinse it thoroughly, and then you should be able to use the brush. You do not want to have something residual from this interact with your paint. Sometimes, no matter what you do, a brush may just not go back to its original shape. For instance, this guy here, um, I think we've got some super glue up here in the end, maybe white glue, canopy glue, something's, something's in there that I just cannot get out no matter how much I try to clean it. Um, that doesn't mean that this is the end for this brush or brushes like it. You can take brushes that have seen better days and maybe trim the bristles and turn them to dry brushing to stippling, to applying pigments, or mud, or other weathering techniques. So the brushes don't have to just be tossed in the trash and then replaced, they can still have a second life. And remember, if you do that, if you trim the brush up and you're using it for other things, remember to take care of it. Still treat it like it's a brush that's meaningful to you, and then that might be the last time that you have to do something like that to a brush that you own. One last thing. It's natural for brushes to pick up staining the color of the paints that you use with them. For instance, this brush here, it's a clean brush. 
It, however, has picked up, you know, some reds and blues and blacks and greens and grays and browns just staining from use over the years. That's natural. Don't fret about it. As long as that brush is still maintaining its shape and it's still soft and it's doing its job, it's still a good brush. So that's cleaning and maintenance of your paintbrushes. I'm Tim Kidwell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.